Good evening. It's Monday night. Monday night spark. So in today's live training, we're going to be talking about how to get rid of stubborn belly fat. So are you getting frustrated that you are running a lot and you might be running now kind of more than you ever have, but you still have that lower belly pouch or you still have those love handles. So in tonight's live training, I'm going to be bringing on a special guest. I'm very excited to be able to, if I can here, add her in. So guest, we have Dawn Tevitz, who is a personal trainer, and she is owner and founder of Multi Sports Academy Gym right in Hamden. And Dawn has over 20 years of managing and directing experience within the fitness and health industry. And I'm very, very excited to have her on here. And I think she just jumped on. How you doing, Dawn? Hey! <laughs> <laughs> so as you guys are coming on here on the live, um, Dawn and I first met when I was actually going through grad school, PT school at Quinnipiac, and I got my strength and conditioning certification, and I was utilizing that to work as a personal trainer and to kind of utilize a lot of the exercise stuff I was learning in class, and I met Dawn back then, and she was super awesome. She actually taught me a lot of things about personal training as I was a novice um, personal trainer, and we actually reconnected I don't know, like 15 years later and <laughs> time flies and it does we connected. So I'm really excited. So those of you that are coming on here on the live, do you guys remember Bally Total <laughs> Fitness in Hamden, um, right on Dixwell Avenue there? Cause that's where Dawn and I both work together. So if you remember Bally's, just type in Bally's into the comment box. And for those of you who are jumping on here on the live, just let me know you're here on the live. I can see people are watching, but just type in live into the comment box so I know you are here on the live. But before we get into um, some of what you do, Dawn, I really want to kind of let everyone know what we're going to be covering in today's live is kind of three common questions that um, you might be having as a runner. Um, Dawn's going to share some tips with us. So we're going to talk about how can you get rid of that stubborn belly fat, right? So that's kind of, I think, everyone's kind of biggest pain point. Um, the other thing we're going to be covering is will too much body fat affect our performances as a runner? Or even if you're an active adult, let's say you're jumping on here, will it affect, you know, your ability to work out in the gym? Will it affect your ability to play a sport, cycle, do whatever sport that you like to do and stay active? Um, then lastly, we're going to be covering, is there anything else that goes into improving lean body mass? So for as you guys are hopping on here on the live, like I said, just type in live. And for those of you, I know a lot of you are going to watch this on the replay because you might be like watching Dancing with the Stars or something right now. Um, just type in replay into the comment box so I know you uh, watched it. So, Dawn, if you don't mind, can you give us a little quick introduction of kind of who you are, your kind of backstory? I gave a little intro, but why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah, um, I got involved in fitness. Um, at an early age, I actually was living in the area and commuting down to Darien for my first job. I was going to night school. I decided not to go to college. I was doing, doing college at night and I started commuting down to Darien as a secretary. And I just was immediately like thrown off by the commute. And I walked into the Hamden Valleys one day and I just said, you know, hi. And I introduced myself to the manager and she hired me on this spot. And that's how the story goes. And the funny part is, is that her name is Jeannie Mecca. I don't know if you know her, but her husband, Billy Mecca. Yeah. Yeah. And the world is so secular, you know, and connected. Yeah. She hired me right on this spot. And I ended up working there for like four years when I was 19 to 23. And I left there. I, and then I went on and had, you know, four kids. And then I came back to the industry and that's when you met me. So I was at Bally's in the early days, left and came back to Bally's for another stint after that. But, you know, the industry changed so much. So what happened to me was I had to go back to school, you know, like when I was 19, no one cared what your background was or what your degree was. There was only one qualified guy at the Hamden Bally's and he had a degree in exercise.
ended up becoming like the ladies director. I taught classes. I trained people. I didn't know what the hell I was doing, you know, and that was back in the eighties. Um, and then when I came back, I was so intimidated, but you know, it was a good thing. I mean, the industry has come so far that now they make you have some <laughs> qualifications before you train people. And so I became NASM certified and then I went on and did all kinds of stuff. And I've worked at Bally's, North Haven Health and Racket, Health Tracks. Um, I did a lot of people privately in the home, you know, at the track, at, every, anywhere. And then I opened my own place about 10 years ago. Nice, nice. So that is in Hamden, Multisports Academy. And that is kind yes. of where I am on site, seeing a lot of my clients. Um, so those of you who might have seen some posts um, or seen some things. So this is the gym that we're talking about. And one of the reasons, honestly, that I decided to – um, treat my clients and help my clients out of this facility is because of the kind of the relationship that and the person that I knew that Dawn was um, and her philosophy for training. So hopefully we'll get into that a little bit today and you guys will be able to see kind of some of the things that I've noticed over the years and how you've been able to help your clients. But one thing that we want to ask of all of you who are jumping on here strong on the live, um, some of us here on the live, Ruth, how are you? Good to see you. Um, Brian, hey, what's up, Brian? How are you? Katie's here on the live. Um, we, so we got a bunch of winners um, who, who just ran a bunch of marathons here on the live. Jolene's here. Congratulations. Awesome. New York City. We had uh, Marine Corps. We got Libby here. We got Stephanie here. Roseanne, thank you guys for jumping on here on the live. So the thing that we ask of you is that if you have a question, please feel free to drop it into the comment box. Um, Dawn is happy to answer any of your questions. I'm sure you might have some questions as we go along related to training. So we take our time away from our businesses, away from our family right now, dedicated to you. So we just ask that you engage with us and ask us questions so we're not just like talking to each other um, as we go along. So that's the only thing that we ask of you. And a lot of times people can be intimidated at times. They think like their question's dumb, but you'll be surprised that someone else probably has that same question. So please feel free. We are a very supportive community. No one is going to like lash out at you or tell you that your question's dumb or, you know, we're, we're here to help you. So what we're going to do is um, let's get into question number one. So the first question here um, that I have for you, Dawn, is Hold on a second. how do I get Maggie, rid make it's cutting out. Make sure you're not on video. Sorry. He's mad. My daughter all says right. her Wi-Fi is... You can hear me? That's right all right. Now, That's all right. Of course. <laughs> so bear with me. So what was your all right. question? All right. So first, first question I have for you is how do we get rid of stubborn belly fat or that like, <laughs> you know, that lower belly pouch or, you know, in my case, you know, love handles. Um, so I think I, there's I all, like there's all kinds of fun that names. We all want to work on. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, um, yeah. how do we get rid of that? <laughs> um, I, well, you know, it's interesting even just going back and just refreshing over my studies and, and, and going back and making sure that, you know, I haven't done a lot CEUs in the last six months, but making sure nothing has changed science wise. It's sad to say it's the same information, Dwayne, that it was 20 years ago. And that is, you know, it, they've come a long way. But sugar, you know, sugar is causing a whole bunch um, of belly fat inactivity. Now, obviously, on this group, a lot of people are not inactive. And that's the difference. Um, what happens is, is that sometimes people concentrate so much on their cardio or their running that they're maybe neglecting some of the strength work that keeps your body fat lower. Um, it depends. There's different types of runners. So as far as getting rid of it, it's always the same thing. It's about getting rid of sugar, um, increasing fiber in your diet, increasing protein in your diet. And sadly, like we, you've heard that catchphrase and a lot of people have who are reading magazines and looking online. And that is, is that this is one in the kitchen. The fight is one in the kitchen. And no one wants to hear that, including myself. And yes, we could strength train and we could run, but it's really about kind of what we're putting into our mouth, along with the exercises that go with it that we could talk about in a bit. But um, it's about some of the things that cause belly fat. You know, it is interesting, and this hasn't changed either, is, and you know this from your studies, and just for the regular layman who's listening right now, is that, um, you know, prehistorically, 
we start, we have fat that sort of protects our organs, right? So, and sadly, if we get past 40 years old, if you have people on here that are over 40, which I think a lot of the demographic is, <laughs> yeah, um, is that it, it's actually the fat that starts to grow around our belly. It's, it's for a purpose. It's for, to, to protect our organs. And um, we start to lose that fat around our hips and our legs, and it actually starts to come around our belly. And so, you know, you hear words getting thrown around and for us, they're normal words, but for like a regular person who's just trying to start to run and be in shape, um, there's a couple things that happen um, is that, you know, depending on your age, belly fat could be developing because number one of your age, number two, you could be post-menopause if you're a female. So we have like the double fight that a male has and, um, and the diet. It's, it's about alcohol. It's about the sugar. And um, I don't know about you, but high stress in your life is the high cortisol levels in our body. They cause a lot of us to hold that visceral fat, that subcutaneous fat that's, you know, kind of around our stomachs. And that's really hard to control sometimes if you can't control the stress in your life. So it's the whole picture. That's like, that's why I was telling you the other day about, you know, when you and I are talking about this discussion tonight about the holistic approach. It's not just about do these six exercises and your belly fit will calm down. It's a catchphrase, you know, because so many people are talking male and female about how do I lose this? This is like, this is frustrating. I'm running all the time or I'm, I'm in the gym four times a week or I eat like an angel. You know, um, it, it, there's so many factors that come into each individual that you can't have a cookie cutter plan for each person. You have to look at each person uniquely and see what makes up that person. I don't know if that's too broad for you, but like, for instance, what's their sleep pattern? You know, how many hours a day does this person sit? Because there's a whole avalanche of problems that comes from people who sit too much, their posture. Um, that could be also causing weak pelvic floor. If a woman has had children. So I think it's unique, but if you want to keep it simple, you know, you just have to say, what does the diet look like? Um, what is the stress level of this person? What, how many hours do they sit? What is their posture like? And do they strength train? And that's the thing is, you know, those, those so, factors right there. So do you mind if I just jump in right there? Because I Go definitely ahead. like that you mentioned some of the other things that we don't talk a lot about. Um, and I think maybe we'll get into those a little bit later, like the stress, the nutrition, the sleep. Um, but in regards to strength training, so I know a lot of runners on here might not include a lot of strength training. So why would strength training, I don't really get that because I think many people probably have heard um, that if you're looking to lose body fat, if you're looking to lose weight, then you need to do cardio, right? And just mm -hmm. do some cardiovascular exercises. And that may be why some may have started running, um, but and may have seen results early on and lost weight and maybe got a little leaner, but why would strength training help someone lose that kind of belly fat? What is that? Well, when you meant, you mentioned about the running, I mean, the reason why is always about injury prevention, you know, um, you know, reducing, at least decreasing the incidence of injury. If somebody mm -hmm. else is working on those other muscles, increasing your flexibility, and muscle is just so much more efficient than fat. So like it helps your power, it helps your speed, it's going to help your overall quickness. And if your lean weight is higher, then you're going to actually, like there's all these percentages that are thrown out in the many, many, many different studies. But if somebody has a higher lean mass, which is why you strength train to get it, because it's so hard to hold on to muscle. I mean, one of the saddest statistics. Um, I had a car accident a couple of years ago and the orthopedic surgeon and I are becoming really friendly. And, you know, one of the things that he said is, is that he just retook his boards and he's all depressed because he said, if you don't do strength training within two to 10 days to four weeks, you can lose up to an inch of muscle on your thigh. And I, I was like, what? I mean, that's just a, like an average human breathing air. It's not even anything about a person who is an athlete. Um, so the fact that, you know, we, we're always fighting those factors where, you know, we're living longer than we ever lived before. I mean, that's not any news, but, um, 
you know, strength training is going to keep holding up that skeletal structure. And on when my husband was on your podcast and he talked about posture, it, it just keeps that, that topic comes up constantly. If somebody has a weak mid back because they sit a lot or they commute a lot and, you know, on the drive to work or whatever, then what happens is sitting on top of that pelvic floor, if that pelvic floor is weak, then the person, if they try to go do athletics, then they don't have as much endurance. They, they definitely are not fast. They might just be chugging along. So, and they're not going to just, they're just not going to last as much and they're going to get injured because they don't have those muscles to sustain those little, it, well, those little tiny safety pen muscles or those extensor muscles that hold up our spine, that hold up our, you know, and the muscles are just more efficient that hold and sit on top of the bones. And I'm not, I mean, I'm preaching to the choir with you, mm -hmm. but you yeah. know, one of the first things I do when I meet somebody is finding out about, I know you're saying about how do you get rid of that fat, but it's, it's about adding those core exercises in, I guess, and trying to kind of work like a microwave cooks food from the inside out. So I approach somebody and say, let's, how strong is your center? Do you have back pain? You know, and if you don't, if you have back pain, well, then we got to go really slow. If you don't have back pain, then like, cool, let's go for it. And just try to really hit somebody from the inside out so that when, pardon my French, but when stuff starts to go wrong in your life, um, physically, emotionally, if you don't have any reserves to tap into, then you're kind of screwed. Um, you know, you're going to get colds, you're going to break down, you're going to get a cold, you're going to get an injury. And that's just, it's just science. I'm not making that up for sure. Yeah, yeah. No, I definitely hear that. So Don, we got some uh, new people jumping on here. So guys, if you are jumping on here on the live, um, just type in live into the comment box. And if you're watching this on the replay, just type in hashtag team replay. Um, so we're here talking about how to get rid of that stubborn belly fat, um, if you're an active adult, if you're a runner and you're constantly training, but you're wondering how do I lose that little like pouch I have or the love handles you have, that's what we're talking about with fitness expert um, Don Tevitz today. So Don, I think you brought up a lot of good points. Um, and for some of the things that resonated with me is all the patients that I've seen who's had knee surgery, or if any of you have had knee surgery and or you know someone who has knee surgery and after their surgery after they're immobilized in a brace whether it's acl whether you're a fracture whether you had meniscus you know think about the size of your calf muscle or your quad muscle after surgery compared to the other side do you guys if you if you know what i'm talking about just type in like uh, muscle atrophy <laughs> into the Ow, uh, comment scary. box because <laughs> you see that muscle girth like go down dramatically like within a week or two, mm -hmm. like that calf muscle just shrinks the quad and it takes forever to get back. So that's something that definitely resonated with me that I see a lot in post-surgical patients that I see. Um, so we do have uh, Marissa, thank you for joining. Beth, congratulations on your race. Uh, thank you for joining. Abby's here. Donna, good to see you. Thanks for jump, jumping on here. So we do have uh, Julie here as well. And Katie, thanks for letting me know you're here on the live. Um, so Stephanie has a question. Um, she says, when we're talking about strength training, are we talking about all of it? Are we talking upper body, lower body, core, or just core mainly? Think of, I'm not just thinking of, don't just think of it as core mainly. I think it just depends on the individual and how much time that a person has, right? So when you think of core, I think core is such an overused word now. When you and I were at Bally's 15, 20 years ago, core was like, ooh, what's core? Core is, you think of your body, Remove your arms, remove your legs, remove your head. That's your core, right? <laughs> it's, it's from the armpits to the hips, right? And so it's all of it, you know. That I like core, <laughs> the armpits it, it's to the, the hips, deep. I like that. Yeah, so it's kind of like you have your deep layer, your middle layer, your outer layer of the structure of the abdomen, but you have your spine and you have all your tiny extensor muscles attached to your spine. So, yes. If I am on a short amount of time with a client, I'm not going to fret or be worried. And I try to say this to them too. If you don't have a lot of time, especially I have four kids. So when I was up and coming, like I would get so stressed out. Oh my God, I didn't get my workout in that had calves and triceps and biceps. And I say to people, look, think of, we're trying to expend the most amount of energy and gain, have the most progress or gains or success, right? And what is that? Your biggest muscle groups in your body. So if you have time, you should do chest, back, legs, core. If you don't have time, core, 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 core every day. And core is that 
middle, that I love, million analogies, but I love the one that talks about how it's like a tree trunk, right? You have this really strong tree trunk and then you have all the branches that come off of it. And we're trying to keep that tree trunk solid and strong and we'll go from there. I mean, it just depends on the person. So when she says like, what do you do? I think, yeah, definitely core. And then if you have time, you should be doing exercises. Our life is about pushing and pulling. So yeah, you're pulling, you're pushing. And then the legs are sitting, walking, you know, it's people complicate it and it doesn't have to be complicated, but don't freak out about getting in the arms I know guys like to show their biceps and girls too. They like to good, look good in tank tops. So logically, we know we shouldn't be caring about how our stomachs or the way our arms look in a tank top, but we can't help ourselves. So, you know, you know, the thing is, is it just depends on how much time you have in order to put into it. So to answer her question simply is, I would say core number one, if you can daily, of course, maybe rest one day, depending on how hard you hit it. But if you have the time, then add in, yes, add in strength. But depending on what kind of runner you are now, hey, I'm going to admit, number one, I am not a runner anymore. I retired. So <laughs> I had to. <laughs> I had to. I mean, I, I can go out and run a 5K right now, and I would, but I would be paying for it. Um, my point is, is that if you're an active adult, even if you're a runner on here or an active adult, I mean, everybody, no matter what type of exercise that you love or you hate, um, you should be incorporating something that's going to really – try to help your pelvic floor, your core, and prevention of injury all, all up and down from, you know, like I said, shoulders to hips. Pits to hips. Nice. Uh, pits to hips. I, I've never <laughs> heard that before. That is awesome. I love it. I love it. Um, so, guys, does this make sense? So, if it does make sense, just type in make sense into the comment box. And if you'll notice, guys, like everything, I love what you're saying, Dawn, because – and we didn't even talk about this beforehand. Um, but in terms of like, definitely my focus is a lot on injury prevention, right? That's kind of what I pride myself in and in keeping people active and preventing injuries. But so that's how I look at the core, but it's nice to hear you saying that also focusing on these larger muscle groups, these core muscles is also going to help me get more lean muscle mass so I can burn and metabolize more of the body fat right, that we have, and right. so that's tip number one, and then the other like thing, a, yeah. um, no, no, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say is that one of the things I thought was interesting when I was trying to pull up my stuff is that it was talking about, so say for running, and we'll use that as an example, about the dark side of running, when you don't do any of the core stuff and you just keep running, there are always exceptions to a rule as far as phenoms who could just run and run and run and run and never have an injury. But that's not the normal. The normal right. is, is that, you know, you know, Jane Jones decides that she wants to get back in shape. And so she's going to start running. And I thought it was really interesting. I was talking to my daughter about it before we started talking is that sometimes women, I don't know if it happens to men, but this article was geared about females about you get bloated after running. Like, seriously this is not fair it's like when you go and you eat a salad and you expect you should look like j-lo and you know <laughs> but or if you went and you actually exercised for a week and you feel like you should you suddenly should fit in a size smaller because it just takes so much work and effort right um but anyway this this whole research article was about that your body actually is viewing it as a stressful situation so if you only run once a week or twice a week it's like you're putting your body it as a stressful event and so then suddenly it, tri it triggers your adrenal glands and releases cortisol and your cortisol your belly is bloated so in order for our bellies not to be bloated we run we have to be consistent with it and i thought that was so interesting it could be of course like if kelly or frankie were on here for nutrition it could be the person's not drinking enough water it could be the person's getting insufficient amount of carbohydrates and protein it's rare but or people eat too much when they run i never heard of that unless they're doing a long distance but the number one cause was that your body is stressed out because you're mm -hmm. only running. It's like a weekend warrior. If you only run once a week or you do something of strenuous physical activity um, sporadically, it's, it's pretty bad. You know, it can right. really mess you up. Consistency is key in UI. You know, people know that and they're, they don't want to hear it, but that's the hardest part of adding into it. I know I went off on a tangent. But, but when you talk about strength training, 
what the, the statistics, no matter what article or research article you read when it comes to science, it's saying that, you know, there's up to eight to 10% increase of running efficiency if you are doing strength training because it increases, it, you know, because you're increasing your mileage and you might be increasing, might be overloading you. So that's why if you don't have strong muscles, you have weak muscles and instability, and then you're going to get strains and you're going to get tears. So no matter what physical activity it is, you have to stay strong or else, you know, because your sedentary lifestyle um, leads to the underdeveloped, underdeveloped muscles and muscles that don't fire. And mm -hmm. I know that we're on a, a, you know, a site that is for pretty much active adults, but I guess why I'm so cynical about this topic is that, as you know, I see people up into their eighties now. Mm -hmm. So I have teenagers I have that kid, that nice kid that you saw, Ori, yep. right? He was a great kid. He had knee surgery, and we were trying to figure out how to get this kid into college. And then I have an 82-year-old woman who wants him to you know, be able to walk a straight line and be able to breathe and stay with her family and be with her kids and grandkids and walk in New York City. So you have such an extreme you know, list of people and what they're trying to, to battle against. And it's just consistency is – the main thing. And I think if you, I'm not against programs that have heavy lifting, like deadlifts, bench press, but it depends on what your goals are. If you don't work on right. those tiny connector muscles and you see it as a physical therapist in your practice every day, and you're trying to teach to your students, then what happens? people a sneaky little weak muscle that popped up from some injury they had in second grade is going to come in and then you know mess with their lives when they're 42 years old i don't know if that right. makes sense so no no i think it definitely does and i i think you know a couple of things that i heard from what you just talked about was that strengthening those core muscles those little muscles are going to allow you to be more efficient for your prime movers or your power muscles yeah. so it will increase your performance so looking at like as a runner you're going to be able to run faster because you're actually are transferring load to the extremities right and be able to run a little bit more efficiently as well mm -hmm. as kind of staying healthy so you can actually run so and i like that because that really goes to one of my big th kind of overall themes in if you kind of checked out the five tips for healthy running is you got to train in order to run, right? So yeah. that's what we're talking about tonight is really training in order to run. And you're talking about the importance of core strengthening um, in order to improve performance, to stay healthy. So Stephanie does say that's an interesting way to look at consistency. She never thought of it that way. So it makes sense, though. She says, thank you. Thank you, Stephanie, for your question. So we have another question by Libby. Libby, how are you? Um, can you give us an example of a core workout? So what's an example of a core workout sure. um, that you would, you know, typically give a client maybe? Well, plank, 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 plank. Can you say plank? <laughs> <laughs> if, somebody has, if somebody has good shoulders, here's the problem. If somebody, if I, you know, from the old NASM test, and NASM is a certification that Dwayne and I went through initially when we were becoming trainers. And if you give someone a, a plank test, and the first thing I'm asking them is, tell me when you have back pain. Because nine out of 10 times, they're going to have back pain. And that's your indicator. And then if somebody has back pain, then I'm not going to just say to them, I'm not going to design a workout for somebody and say, go home and do planks if they have back pain. So I have to show them the kind of accordion file of step A, B, C, D. Okay. So it's kind of like, I'm the queen of modifications, my little nickname at the gym, because I, if I'm saying to someone like your friend Libby, who just said, what do I do? Planks are great. But if you have back pain, don't do it. So that sounds contradictory, but there's ways to do planks. You know, I don't know if she has shoulder issues. Does she have a neck problem? Does she keep a neutral spine? You know, she could do it on her knees. And I would say that's the biggest thing is these exercises, like, for instance, you know, planks, side planks, side planks with legs raised, one leg plank, one arm plank. I mean, planks are awesome if you're just thinking about a simple exercise that you could do on the road. I mean, I design workouts all the time for people who travel for business. They're doing it in the hotel. They're doing it in the gym hotel. Or I have several people right now that I'm working with that I designed a workout for them to do at home and then they come back and see me like once a month and we change it up. 
But that's the thing is making sure that something else isn't hurting you when you go to do this core work. And there's just sometimes some real surprising stuff that I've learned. I was so angry when I learned some of the things later in life because our gym teachers coming up didn't know this stuff. Now, thankfully, our gym teachers are much more educated for our children and grandchildren nowadays. But back then, they didn't care if your back hurt. No one cared about that. They were like, just right. do it. And right. the presidential test, they've even changed for kids now. And um, you have two young daughters. Yeah. So I would say planking is a great thing. And then there's all kinds of things as far as, you know, you know doing back hyperextensions, supermans, um, you know, V-sits. But, but again, I know it sounds kind of, you know, to nauseam, but if somebody has back pain, I have to get really creative and come up with ideas for them and how to improve their core strength. But just as far as easy exercises, yeah, plank, um, just, just sitting, just sitting back and leaning back, you know, I mean, that sounds so simple to person, but I even get my, I had her today, my 82 year old lady, we sat on the edge of the chair and I just told her to lean back. And if she just leans back and she, and I'm like, just hang out there and have a conversation with me and breathing. I don't know about you, but so many things are popping up now. It's like, Oh, diaphragmic breathing. You know, it's like, you know, I don't know if you've ever seen someone who has really developed abs. Sometimes they can almost look like distended, right? Um, mm -hmm. Not many out yep. there, but it could, that's all bad breathing. People are doing such right. a good job. They think it's like, you think you're eating a healthy yogurt. And you're like, I'm eating yogurt. I'm so healthy. And then all of a sudden you go, oh, crap, it has 35 grams of sugar in it. Whoops, <laughs> fail. So it's the same thing with exercise. You know, we think, oh, I'm doing squats. I'm doing push-ups. I'm doing planks. But I think that if we don't, sometimes the exercises, what I, uh, the analogy I loved was when someone said, don't be embarrassed if you're shaking, Right. That's right. how we know. That's how we know. Like some, a lot of new people who come to exercise, they're embarrassed. They're like, I'm sorry, I'm shaking. Yeah, baby, we want you to shake. Yeah. We, you know, shaking means those muscles are turned on and fired up and doing their job. So if you're exercising at home and you're doing a plank and you don't have back pain and you're shaking and you're trembling, yeah, that's awesome stuff. And that's what you want, you know? Yeah, and I, I think you bring up sense. a good, yeah, I think you bring up a good point as far as, um, you know, going to the level of fitness that someone is at and with the planks, like all those modifications you talked about, like there are ways that someone like Dawn can regress an exercise, make it easier. Or if it's easy for you and you're not feeling in your muscles, oh, yeah. and you're not shaking, then there's progressions, right? Absolutely. There's ways to make it harder. Yeah. Um, so I agree. I love, you know, the plank um, exercises as you kind of talked about the other thing I would add in there as you mentioned before is those hip muscles and you know the hip muscles especially the glutes especially for runners kind of is like the core as well so that kind of connects to your core especially because runners are always standing on one leg all the time so your hip stabilizers Libby knows about those um, are very important and I would also add those into the quote unquote core. So it, the core does not just refer to the six pack muscle, everyone. All right. No Especially way. for you as a runner, if you are trying to get a six pack and you think you're going to lose your lower belly, you know, stubborn belly fat by doing sit-ups and crunches, um, that's not going to happen. So as Dawn mentioned before, just a, a quick brief recap from what I heard so far is strength training, strengthening the big muscles as well as strengthening your core and think about the core as the muscle in the front, on the side, so your side supports, as well as the muscle on the back. Dawn mentioned the extensors. I mentioned the glutes, right? So those are the muscles behind you that are going to be part of that core and help stabilize your spine, prevent injury, make you more efficient, improve your performance. And then if you guys notice, if you've been to the Spark Your Training YouTube channel, you will notice that there are more exercises for the hip area in the back area, and I actually have a bunch of plank exercises that I haven't had a chance to put on yet. They will eventually be on the channel, but there are more of those exercises than elbow exercises. There's like one elbow exercise. And even shoulder exercises as well as, you know, ankle and foot. There's a bunch I just added there for my dancer population because they get a lot of foot and ankle issues. But besides that, you'll notice there's like a lot more hip exercises because the hips don't lie. Hips are important. They are part of the core area. So Libby, thank you very much for your question. 
Um, so Libby says that I, I thought you might say that, that planks. Um, <laughs> I know. Did them tonight already. She, she actually did her planks tonight. And I just want to welcome on Emmett. Emmett's here on the live. Thank you Hi, for Emmett. jumping on. Uh, Nicole is here. Uh, Katie's here. Nikki's here. Brian's here. And Laura, Laura's here. Thank you for jumping on, Laura. We're going to be seeing Laura in a live in a couple of weeks. So I'm excited about that. Wow. Um, so those of you who are just jumping on here, just feel free to drop any of your questions for Dawn in the comment box that are related to kind of getting rid of that stubborn belly fat, fitness, exercise. So we've covered right now, we've talked about lean body mass. We've talked about um, strength training. We've talked about the core. So is there anything else um, that besides strengthening, Dawn, that goes into kind of improving one's lean body mass? So besides the strength you know, exercises and the core exercises you talked about? Yeah, I, I thought about one of the questions that you asked me earlier was about, you know, is there any kind of negative or detriment to having too much belly fat or too much body fat in general, um, you know, when it comes to running or exercising or whatever. What was interesting is that they, the, the, they, you know, the scientists are basically saying that, believe it or not, having a little bit of body fat is okay because that's your energy stores. It's, it's when people don't have a lot of the lean mass. And people say, well, what is lean mass? I don't know what that means. It's your muscles, your bones, your organs. And obviously your organs and your bones, they're not going to change. The only thing that you can change is the muscle. And so a lot of what's interesting to me is, you know, because I love this stuff is that it hasn't changed much since I came into the industry since my, in the eighties, they're still saying the same window. Like for instance, they say that your body fat should be somewhere as a female between 20 and 28% to just be a healthy human. If somebody is athletic, they would be lower. And it's, really about like kind of increasing your it's about the food and and it's about the exercise and the consistency and and a lot of times there's all these fad diets out there that you see that say oh you can create a habit in 21 days and unfortunately that's a good start and I'm never going to dissuade someone from doing that but sadly it depends on the unique individual like you could have I don't know if you have a sibling Dwayne I should know that but if you have a brother, per se, who's standing next to you and you guys are the same height and the same weight, you guys could completely be different. You could have eaten a bowl of cottage cheese and three hours later, he's starving, but you feel satiated. So it's unique to each person. So that's why it's a really tough question. Um, so I think that it's an experimental thing. That's why these, some of these food journals will say to you, how do you feel? Because they really want to know, are you hungry? Are you emotionally eating? That kind of thing. And, and I think if you become educated about food and you um, t are consistent with moving your body, and if you're having a rough day, don't skip your workout that day. Just modify your movement. And if you get good guidance, you know, um, I think that, you know, I'll give you a copy of this article that my client just gave to me. She's 75. And her doctor couldn't believe it. Her jaw fell to her floor. She said, you have been exercising consistently for 50 years. She started in her 30s. And I thought this was really cool. And she said, I'm going to give you this article. And the article basically says that they did a study on people in their 70s who exercise, people in their 70s who don't, didn't exercise, and people in their 20s who are just regular kids in their 20s. And it turned out that the people who are in their 70s who exercise just hiking, biking, gym goers, not athletes like per se, that they had better cellular structure and they had better cells than the people in their 20s and the 70 something year olds that, that weren't consistent with their exercise. So that was like, wow, you know, I like just kind of answered everything. It just kind of confirmed why I do this you know, and mm -hmm. that she's been just moving her body when she's having a rough week. She just uses what works. And when people say, well, what do I do? There's no magic pill. You know, um, it's just about, you know, people think, oh, I'm just going to run or I'm just going to lift weights. I think it has to just be, you know, a plethora of different things. Like I'm doing a, a workout plan right now, as you know, I won't say who it is for a 12 year old girl. Mm -hmm. And so I put in there, Free play, 45 minutes 
on one of her days and she's like, well, what do you mean? I'm like, go outside, go for a hike, go on the trail with your mom or dad. You know, that should be for adults too. It doesn't matter if you're 12 or you're 54. It, you got to have fun be, with it. You got to have fun. And people sometimes think of exercise as drudgery. Not right. everybody likes it like you and I do. <laughs> and so um, I think that approaching each person as a holistic thing. And so I, w I know that we're kind of going a little long, but what I wanted to say to you that I thought was just so like really affected me and, have, and I've taken it with me on training over these years is that my husband's coach 20 years ago in Vermont, Hank Lang, Clay, my husband did an Ironman in, I don't know, Coeur d'Alene. Where is that? Idaho? Yeah. Well, basically he almost I died. No <laughs> yeah. He almost died. And one thing that his coach called me afterwards and wanted to talk to me so I could talk some sense into my husband. And he said, you're a trainer. I'm going to tell you right now that your husband should be doing core work. And this is 20 years ago, this guy said core work. And I said, why? And he said, because you cannot predict the temperature, the elements of the day. Okay. He said, he showed up here. It's supposed to be 82 degrees and sunny and breezy. And he goes, it was 104. And well, long story short, he didn't have a strong core. He swam, he biked, he run for months, but he never did stretching, yoga, mobility, core work, weightlifting. He never did any of that. And he said, so when this temperature was so extreme and he had no reserves to tap into when shit went wrong in his life, pardon my swear. So that, that's exactly how I like to approach each person and anybody who comes to Multisports Academy. And I think that's why you and I get along so good. And we're sort of like, you know, from another mother, but we're 10 years <laughs> at least apart. But, you know, the thing is, is that, you know, you have four degrees and I'm just a, a girl who learned it on the street since I was 19. And, and that is, is that I really do believe no matter what your spiritual beliefs are, that if you do not have a strong center, you have nothing to like when people get a cold, people go, Oh, I just had a cold. I'm going to jump right back on the gym. I'm like, give it time. A cold is going to hit your core bronchitis and worse is going to hit your core and it's going to knock you out. You need a strong center and that will kind of spread to the rest of everything. So if somebody wants to know what that is, all I could do is I could talk to them about it off this line you know what I mean? Um, but as far as belly fat, I mean, I was pretty shocked that sugar, alcohol, stress, sitting, it was pretty much the same six things, no matter how many different ways you look at it. The old material and the new material is a little bit sexier, but it's not, you know, new stuff. But I mean, I've trained people who never, who are runners who never did any strength training before, but now I have cyclists and runners who come to me, especially in the winter and they're off season and we're doing core two to three times a day. And I encourage them to do stuff on their own as well. And they're seeing PRs. I mean, they're, they're get improving their race times. They're not pooping out as fast. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You know, it depends who your audience is, I think. Right. No, I, I like that you brought up that holistic approach and, and kind of not only looking at losing belly fat from just a strength standpoint or just an exercise standpoint, that you kind of talked about some of the emotional kind of standpoint that that affects stress affects um, our metabolism, stress affects whether or not we're going to be able to exercise. And that would be the other reason why I would say to exercise is to actually relieve some of that stress that you talked about cortisol before um jay just jumped on here what's up jay good to see you buddy um so we're kind of wrapping up here don but if if someone was interested in a little bit finding out a little bit more about training um in order to train in order to run like i i practice and i preach um or needed some guidance on how they can kind of get a little bit more information how can they find out a little bit more about some of the services that you offer um, well, um, myself, um, I'm, I guess, you know, you call me the lead trainer there, but I do have other trainers that are in my facility as well. I'm in Hamden. Um, I'm really easy to get to off the Marin and off of 95. And, um, I do one-on-one -on -one personal training. I do duets. I do small group and sometimes training with friends or family is actually funner and it keeps the hour moving and I'm able to adapt. So if you have somebody in there 
everyone has an injury, it seems like, but um, I'm able to do that. And also we have cycling on site. So if you have your own bike with a, a you know, um, hybrid tire or a road bike tire, we have cycling sessions about three times a week. We're going to be adding a couple more for the winter. Um, and so we also have classes that are on the schedule. And what's nice is I think people kind of get spoiled because pretty much there's personal trainers that are leading, leading the classes. So it's a smaller environment. It's not a big box gym. And you have anywhere between, say, three and 13 people that are in each class, and you're getting that individualized attention. We're keeping your form on point, making sure you're safe. Um, so as far as how they could find me, I'm at multisportsacademy.com. Um, you can also find me on Instagram and Facebook under Multisports Academy. And also Team Mossman Events is my husband's um, – and also my husband's pro president of the tra Team Mossman Triathlon Club. So depending on what kind of person you are, if you're just a regular – you know, a, a normal person who just wants to get healthier and get off of medications and have more energy and um, be able to keep up with your grandchildren while you're walking around New York City, then you can come see me. And if you're an athlete who wants to improve their time and be in the best core physical shape and don't get injuries, that also is a person. So I can kind of be like a chameleon who can see all kinds of people. Um, and if anybody sees this podcast, and they actually watch it in the replay, I'd be happy to give them a discount and just mention that you saw it today or you watched it again and watched me drone oh, on cool. since I went, I went off on a tangent and Dwayne's like freaking out right now. Um, <laughs> Not at <yeah>. all. <laughs> um, but, you know, um, yeah, I mean, I would say that, oh, and the other thing that's exciting is um, my husband and I are excited to be part of, and you are too, Dwayne, because you're a sponsor, but this That's Sunday right. is the Hamden Veterans Run. It's a 5K. There's a really nice guy. He's an Army Sergeant, um, Dolphus Addison, who um, wanted to give back to the town of Hamden, and his story is kind of cool. If you want to know about it, you could read it on Facebook. Um, but um, yeah, it's uh, this Sunday. It's going to be cold, and um, what we're going to be there. We're gonna have, we'll have hot cider, and we'll have hot coffee, and um, there's some really cool sponsors that are involved, including you, Dwayne. And we want to give back to the town of Hamden and the veteran services that are there. And then we have our Run Turkey Run Race, which is um, Thanksgiving morning. It starts at 7.30 a.m. And um, that's pretty cool. That's been fun. We've been doing that for years. So um, we have anywhere, like, I don't know, five, 600 people. And people, it's cold, but you get it out of the way. You get your workout out of the way. And it's a nice family thing. A lot of people come back year after year, and they dress up. And my husband dresses as a pilgrim and so it's a nice tradition so um, that's awesome i've yeah. never done that race before but i guess you know he knew you were going to be talking about run turkey run and tom hart just jumped on here um mm. i know he's run that race before and uh yeah jay 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 grimes my buddy here i think you should run this uh 5k this sunday the veterans day um 5k or the veterans run the first one in Hamden so we can run that race together it's been a little while since we ran together and hopefully Emmett you're gonna uh I'm gonna see you at one of these 5ks so for those of you who are running some five this is like 5k season I feel like right like this month now yeah everyone's finished it's up winding the big, down. yeah everyone's finished up the big marathons the big half marathons so it's like 5k season I feel like so it, for those of you who have a 5k on your calendar just drop it into the comment box um hopefully I'll see you guys um, either this Sunday or the Run Turkey Run 5K, um, leaving straight from uh, Multi Sports Academy right on the trail there. I'm really excited. I hear that's a fun one. And I don't know, I, I might need to dress up. So we might need to take votes. <laughs> we might need to yeah. put out a poll within the group on what I should dress up as. Uh, for I, just got, I just got permission <laughs> that I'm allowed to dress in a pilgrim. Uh, I said to my husband, I don't want to take away your thunder. He goes, no, you could be a Mrs. Pilgrim. That's fine. There you go. There you go. Um, the, the only thing I would say, too, is that, you know, if you want to know anything about it, make a comment in the section below and the lines below. Be, um, but, yeah, this, in the winter, we really focus on off-season conditioning for any of the people who are kind of a higher elevated athlete as well. So if anyone's interested um, in knowing about that, make, make a drop of comment about that. And don't be intimidated. Like one awesome. comment was somebody you treated said, makes me depressed when I watch Dwayne's um, podcast and his things because I want to run again and I can't. And I said, you should still watch. And I said, you know, we deal with a regular population too. It's just people who are still trying to stay active and be healthy and not get sick. You know, um, it doesn't have to be about running, biking, swimming or anything like that. And don't feel intimidated. It could be anybody. Um, trust me, um, I can adapt to anyone and so can you. So um, 
that that's why we're here. And so it's kind of a one-stop shop at our place with Dwayne is doing the physical therapy with me and the other staff. And you can always take a look at the website. And if you have any questions I didn't answer here, please, because I know I tend to babble on and I get so excited. And if you want to know anything, um, you know, just type it in there and let me know. Yeah. So for those of you guys who um, are just jumping on here, um, or if you're watching this on the replay, we covered a lot today. Dawn dropped a lot of fire here. We talked about how to get rid of that stubborn belly fat. We talked about how excessive fat or lack of lean muscle will affect your performance as a runner. Um, we also talked about other things that go into that lean body mass. So such as kind of more of the total package as far as looking at your sleep, your stress levels. So we talked about all that. Thank you guys within our Healthy Runner CT group for jumping on here. If any of this information is helpful for a friend that you have, tag them in the comment box below so then they can watch this and learn some of this information. And if you can't tag them, that means they're not a member of the group. So then you need to invite them to the group, have them join the group, so then they could see some of the content that we're putting out there every Monday night, 8 p.m. We go live to cover a specific topic. We're covering different injuries. Um, and then I like to bring on guests like Dawn. Um, I got a couple other guests planned, but if you have a topic that you think would be worth sharing with the rest of the group, then send me a message, let me know. Um, or if you know of someone that would be a great guest to bring on, then definitely let me know. And I will reach out to them as well as if you have specific questions on topics you would like to hear about in the future. So if any of this information guys this is very, very important, was helpful, valuable, you liked anything that resonated with you that Dawn said, that I said, then please hit that like, hit the love button. It will just help this post be seen in more people's news feeds. So not that we want to see how many likes that we can get, but it's just so we can reach more people, be able to help more people. So please do that as well as tagging a friend. Um, so Dawn, I just want to thank you for taking time for your <laughs> evening and jumping on here and covering these topics. Cause I'm they're, just they're laughing like at topics. myself. All these things I didn't talk about. I have no, more we'll, we'll be here for like five hours. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're, we're going to have you have to come back on. <laughs> we'll bring All you right. back on. All right. Um, All right. Thanks for else? having me. Yeah. Anything else you want to um, say on your way out? No, I just keep moving. Just keep moving. You know, it doesn't matter what you're doing, just keep moving. And, and one of the saddest parts, I think, and it sounds kind of like a broken record, if any of you younger people even know what a record is, but it, what happens is no matter what your condition is, you go to the doctor, no doctor is going to tell you to stop moving. So find a way to keep moving and don't be depressed. And there's plenty of things to do. And for those other elite athletes, up your game and come see me and I'll give you some harder stuff to do. There and so you can go. be a faster let's, uh, runner. <laughs> let's leave it at that. All right. Just all right. keep moving, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you. Monday night, Spark, out. Bye. Out. Bye.